The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. Welcome to another hour with the great forces of the unknown. Those majestic forces that move around, above, and beneath us, pushing and pulling at our lives, our bodies, our brains. Forces no less powerful because we know them not. And here's a thought. How much of their power actually derives from their mystery? Were we to fathom them, explode their secrets, would they then become as comprehensible as, uh, say, the centrifugal force in the spin dryer at the laundromat? Well, the day is far off when we can be that knowledgeable. So, in the meantime, listen. How will you do it? A gun? Do you have a gun? No. Well, then that's no good. A knife? Could you get near him? Near enough to use a knife? Do you have the strength? No. Well, so that's no good. But he has to die. So that I can live. He will die. He will die tomorrow morning. How do you know? He will die of the mass of self. Our mystery drama, The Secret Doctrine, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Mercedes McCambridge. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal and new sugar-free diet 7-Up. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Be careful, they say, what you ask for, lest it be given to you. Who of us knows what to ask for? Who can see far enough into the future to know what gift will delight and which destroy? Better simply to accept whatever comes, with gratitude, whenever possible. Listen with me now to the somber story called The Secret Doctrine. You can begin now, Louise. Now, Father Giles. The others have gone. You said your confession would take some time, so let's begin. <sighs> Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. But go on, Louise. And uh, speak up. Don't mumble. In thought, word, and deed. Oh, Father, I can't find the words to tell you. Remember, I sit in the confessional box not only as your priest, but as God's own surrogate. Father, you know Peter Sorrell. Sorrell? Yes. The American movie star. Oh, I, uh, I don't know any American movie stars, huh? Oh, oh, you you mean the actor who came here to make a film about the saint? It's Vincent de Paul? Uh, yes, yes, yes. It, it, it caused quite a stir in the village. And then uh, something happened. Uh, what was it? Father, Pierre Sorel died. Oh, did he die? I, I hadn't heard. This morning. Oh, God, take his soul. What, uh... What was his illness? He was not ill, Father. He simply died. He slipped away. But he was not an old man. What did the doctor say? Just what I told you. That he was not ill. That he simply grew weaker and weaker until death took him. I know what he died of, Father Giles. You know? He died of the mass of saint Césaire. <gasps> Do you know what you're saying? 
The Mass of Saint-Cécile has not been said in Gascony for hundreds of years. Most priests have never heard it. Oh, no, no, no. Good priest would even say it. I, I think you would best tell me all about it, Louise. Yes, Father. I was in love with Peter Sorrell. In love? You never knew him. He only came here a month ago. I've seen all his films. Each one many times. When one of them came to Dax, I'd walk the 20 miles to see it. And if it was there for two days, I'd roam the streets all night to see it again and again. As many times as it was shown. You call this being in love? How old are you, Louise? I'm 38, Father. Have you ever loved a boy, a, a man? No, Father. I've been in love with Peter Sorrell since I was 18. I've written to him in Hollywood every week for 20 years. And once he answered me. And he sent me his picture. And when I heard that he was coming here... I saw the hand of God. Uh, take care you don't blaspheme, Louise. That is how it seemed to me, Father Giles. Go on. The company he worked for had rented the big house on the hill for him. And the first day he was here, I took him some of my onion soup. Well, well, well. What have we here? I brought you some onion soup, Mr. Sorrell. If you'd care to accept it. I'd care like crazy. I've seen all your films, Mr. Sorrell. I love them all. You've got a big heart. And the next day I took him a bottle of wine. It's called sand wine, Mr. Sorrell. A local product. Like you. You're a local product. It's very good. Really, it is. So are you. What's your name? And the next day, I took him a bottle of brandy. It's Armagnac, Mr. Sorel. It's the best brandy in France. I'll just bet it is. There's a dish I know how to make with this brandy. Roast capon. And you're going to make it for me, aren't you, Louise? That is your name, isn't it? Louise? The next day I went to his house, but this time he wasn't alone. There was a man with him, a young American gentleman. I shouldn't have let you talk me into this picture game. Me talk you into it? Who cares about saints anymore? Well, there's got to be a reaction from all that demon stuff eventually. Pardon me, Mr. Sorrell. The cape on it... Louise! Louise, uh, meet my agent, Gabe Hauser. How are you, Louise? Mr. Hauser, I'll keep the cape on warm... Until you're ready. Please. Yes, when you're ready, call me. Who is that? A fan. One of my millions of fans. What's for dinner tonight, Louise? Gascony pork and cabbage in a special sauce. <laughs> Why can't we eat like that on the set, huh, Peter? Because Louise isn't on the set. Oh, if only I could be. Hey, hey, we could fix her up with a walk-on or something, couldn't we? You could. Hey, she could be one of the Sisters of Charity. Why not? Louise, the star has spoken. So then, Father, I could be with him during the day. And not just in the evenings. I was in heaven. Uh, you have strange concepts of theological matters, Louise. But uh, go on. Well, the atmosphere of that place, all the fuss and the laughter and the excitement, it all went to my head. And I forgot that I only wanted to serve him. I wanted to love him, to belong to him. And to have him belong to me. You poor woman. I watched him every moment. My eyes were fastened on his face. My ears strained to catch every word that fell from his lips. There is nothing so grand as a good priest. It hurts me to see God's work in unloving hands. Cut! That's a print. Okay, let's break. I didn't think anyone noticed how I stared at him 
followed him about, waited for him after the day's work. But one day as I watched him... And the city hospital. Two to a bed. Some lying on the floor. You're crying, Louise. He's doing a scene with the cardinal. Oh, it's not a sad scene. It's not even a good scene. Oh, it's a very good scene. It's a wonderful scene. Everything he does is wonderful. It was Noemi, Father. You know her? The woman who came here from the Basque country last year? She got herself a job. An extra like me. And so I saw a lot of her after that. My father. I degraded my father. I scourged my father. Why, you want him for your very own. Needed Not me. the way you mean, Noemi. Oh, yes. Him. Precisely the way I mean. Need what other way is there? Oh, my savior. I need to confess. Cut. Bring it. Right for lunch. Noemi was always there, Father. I couldn't send her away. She belonged there as much as I did, after all. Why in the world should I lie down when those poor people are calling for me? Why, you want him, I Louise. It shows on your face. See them lying it's hopeless. Tell me, can you get your hands on some locks of his hair? Cuttings from his fingernails, his toenails. Why? Why should I? Why, they will give you power over him. Oh, I can't believe that. Oh, believe. Believe it's true. His hair, his fingernails, his toenails. If you want him, get them and bring them to me. Need me? Cut. Break that. Incensions on the set, please. I didn't believe her father, not really. But my desire had become so great, I thought I should go mad. I had no trouble finding bits of his hair. I picked up all I needed from the floor of the makeup room. But the cuttings from his fingernails and his toenails, that was more difficult. Then one evening at his house... DePaul was the first social worker in history. You know that, Gabe? I mean, he organized social services. Would you like some more Armagnac, Mr. Sorrell? Oh, you still here, Louise? You can go home whenever you feel like it. You don't have to stick around. I've been listening and watching. A great dinner, Louise. I noticed you bite your nails, Mr. Sorrell, when you talk. Oh, yeah. A uh, childhood habit. You shouldn't do that. Yeah, that's what my mother always said. If you let me cut your nails properly. My mother always said that, too. I have a scissors right here with me. <laughs> My mother also always had the scissors right there with her. So while they talked, I cut his fingernails. And I saved them all, even the little bits of cuticle in my kerchief. And when I had finished... Louise, you're a saint. Oh, <laughs> If I'm a saint, Mr. Sorrell, I should wash your feet. Wash my feet? I uh, say now. They uh, get awfully uh, dirty walking around the set in those old sandals. And all the saints, even the Pope, he washes the feet of a sinner once a year to show humility. <laughs> I'm your sinner, is that it? Uh, let her, Peter, if she wants to. Well, you really want to? And to cut your toenails. Well, what can I say? It's the best offer I've had since I came to France. <laughs> And so I did, Father. And when I left that night, I had all the cuttings in my kerchief. And I took them to Noemi, who waited for me in the woods. Take this, Louise. What is that? It's a little bag made from the skin of a toad, which my own daughter impaled at midnight in the graveyard of the old abbey. Oh, we put all your precious cuttings into it. Now, pull the drawstrings tight... That's it, and hang it around your neck, under your dress. Yes, 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 just like that. How do you know that it will work? I know. It seems so wrong. It's going against God, isn't it? Hmm. Have you ever heard of Eliphaz Levi and the secret doctrine? No. Well, Eliphaz Levi was his pen name. He wrote many books on the subject of magic. Magic exists. 
always has existed all over the world. But I'm afraid of it, Noemi. Oh, give in to your fear and you will lose the thing you most desire. Conquer your fear and the secret doctrine will bring you Peter Sorrell. How do I know? Magic is everywhere, unseen, unheard, but it is working all the time. You need only the spiritual energy to make it work for you. But do I have energy like that? I don't think I do. Oh, never mind. I do. Now, kneel down. No, 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 do not bow your head. Raise your face to the sky. Send up a prayer from your loins to Aether, God of chaos and the dark. Well, the secret doctrine has been kept from me, I must say. All my life, I have struggled from problem to problem, quandary to quandary, with only my limited intelligence to assist me. And all the time, was there a secret doctrine that might have solved things magically? If so, I'm a little late finding it out. We'll be back shortly for Act Two. The Canton Civil Defense in Illinois reports they are watching a tornado to the southwest of the city of Canton. They say it's headed southward in the general direction of Lewistown in Fulton County, Illinois. magic I have ever known was long, long ago when I expelled a loud and angry scream and food instantly appeared. Talk about rubbing a lamp. Talk about wearing a bag of discarded nails and hair about your neck. Well, we shall see if they can match my infant cry. Some sort of magic was working, Father Giles, because when I got to my feet, after that strange prayer to the god of chaos, there in the woods with the toadskin bag still hanging round my neck, I felt that I was a beautiful woman. Can you imagine that, Father? Yes. The next day was my last, so far as the film was concerned. I hated to step out of the sister of charity habit and get back into my own clothes, but my spirits rose to the sky when Peter stopped me and said... This was your last day, wasn't it, Louise? Yes, my last day. Well, it won't be the same around here without you. We'll miss you. Will you? I mean, will you miss me? I'll miss you the most. But I'll see you at the house, won't I? I you're not going to desert me now, are you? Never, never. I'd never do that. Well, you'd better not, Louise. I met Noemi late that night in the woods... And I told her what Peter had said. And what I had said. You see? The magic is beginning to take hold. I couldn't go to the set the next day. What reason would I have? So I spent the day in his house, cooking a shoulder of lamb for him in the Gascon style. You know how long that takes, Father. Louise! In the kitchen... That smells so good. It's something special I'm cooking for you. <laughs> Louise, Louise, what have I done to deserve you? You're the greatest thing that's happened to me since... <laughs> You're the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Let's put it that way. I told Noemi that night that time was growing short, that in two days Peter surely would be leaving France. And I told her I must go with him. Now, listen, Louise. This is what you must do. When he comes home, you must be waiting for him on his bed, all naked and perfumed. And he will love you. I had loved him, Father, for so many years... And now every dream, every desire would come true. I was lying on his bed, as Noemi had told me I should be, with my hair all freshly washed and perfumed as my body was. And I heard the front door close. 
and I heard his feet on the stairs. Louise? I couldn't answer. I waited for the bedroom door to open, and it did. Who's... What a... Louise, is that you? What in the name of... I've... I've been waiting for you. Are you crazy? Peter, listen to me. I want you to love me. You do love me. I've seen the love growing in your eyes. I've heard it in your voice. Take me now and tell me that you love me and that we will go to America together, to your home where I will love you and look after you. Louise, now listen to me. See, look over there. I brought all my clothes. I feel that I'm reaching the end of a long, long journey. I've loved you so long. Louise, let me talk to you. Oh, yes. Talk to me. Louise, if 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 I, I've made you think that that I'm anything more than just very fond of you, I'm sorry. Louise, I'm very, very sorry. If I've if, 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 if I've made you think I love you, well I'm I'm sorry. What more can I say? But you do love me. You've loved me for three whole days. Three days? And I've loved you for years and years. But you've only loved me for three days, so of course it seems new to you. I understand. Now, now, Louise, what three days are you talking about? The last three days, of course. Ever since I started wearing this. What's that? It's a bag made from the skin of a toad. A toad impaled at midnight in the graveyard of the Abbey. What's in that bag, Louise? Why, part of you. Bits of your hair, bits of your fingernails, your toenails, little particles of you. What kind of a game are you running on me, Louise? It's no game. It's real. Real hell. All the time you were hanging around here. You were cooking and cleaning and washing and all that. You were hanging around the set, waiting on me, telling me I'm, I'm such a great actor, begging to cut my fingernails, my toenails. You were conning me. You were running some kind of a tricky, sneaky game on me. It was no game. Now, look, lady, you get your clothes on fast, you hear me? You get out of here. You want some money? No. No. I'll give you money. I'll give you money. You've earned it. But if you ever try to play any of these crazy tricks on me again, I'm going to track you down. I'm going to have you put away. Now, you get out of here. I did get out, Father Giles, but I can't remember how. The next thing I remember is running through the woods, calling for Noemi. And then I remember falling down on the ground and the blackness coming down over me. My poor Louise. Noemi found me a little later. I don't know how much later. What happened, Louise? Nothing happened, Noemi. He doesn't love me. He never did. I think you'd better take back the little toad skin bag, Noemi. It didn't work. But did you do everything I told you? Yes, I did. I washed my hair and perfumed my body, and I lay on his bed. But when he came home, he didn't want me. I tried to tell him about the secret doctrine, but he didn't want to listen. You told him? I tried to. After all, I don't know much about it. Only what you've told me, and I didn't understand all of that. But he didn't want to hear about it. Oh, the man's a monster! Yes. He is a monster. You poor woman. No, don't you feel sorry for me either, Father Giles. I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me. But don't you see... You let your desires take hold of you, Louise. You let them dictate your actions. You lost control. Oh, yes, I did that. You became blind to the realities of the matter. Yes, I did that, too. I fell in love with a man when he was only a walking shadow on a screen. I hurt no one. I would never have hurt him if he hadn't come to France to make another of his foolish motion pictures. Louise... Would it make you feel better, my child, if I were to tell you that you are not the first to give your heart to an unknown man who's only making his living by performing in public? 
I suppose that is true, Father. Does it make you feel a little better? But I don't feel badly, Father. You don't? Not about him. Not about trying to give myself to him in his telling me he didn't want me. I felt badly about it at the time. Very badly, I suppose. Of course you did. But by the time Noemi found me in the woods, I felt quite differently. Just how did you feel? Very calm, very clear, very right. Right about what? Clear about what? About what I must do. And what was that? I kill him, of course. But you have said that it was all your own doing. That no one else should be blamed. Quite so. But I had to kill him in me. Don't you see what I mean? Uh, I'm not sure that I do. Father, he was part of me. He'd been part of me for many, many years. There was more of him in me than there was of myself. Oh, you must understand. I, I, I'm trying, Louise. I knew how wrong I'd been to love him. Yes, to lust after him. To have obscene thoughts about him there in the dark of the theater. I knew these were sins. They were bad sins. And now I was willing to take upon myself the last sin of all. To kill him. Don't you understand that? I, I don't believe I do. How strange. Noemi understood. You say Noemi understood? What you have just told me? Yes, Father. There, that night in the forest, I told her how I must commit this most grievous sin. How will you do it? A gun? Do you have a gun? No. Well, then that's no good. A knife... Could you get near enough to him to use a knife? Are you strong enough? No. Well, then that's no good. But he must die so that I may live. He will die. He will die tomorrow morning. How do you know? He will die of the mass of Salsicea. <laughs> no fury like a woman scorned. And all the scorned women from the beginning of time must have at least looked around to see if there was a gun or a knife nearby. Sometimes there was. And the story had an unhappy ending. And a messy one. But what if those poor scorned women had known of the mass of Saint Césaire? A black and malevolent ritual of which you will learn more shortly. When I bring you Act Three. This is WBBM Chicago. We promised you further details of the Mass of Saint Césaire, that horrid leftover from the Dark Ages. And so we shall. We always keep our word. Let us pick up our story where we left off. With Louise and Noemi talking in hushed tones beneath the moon in the dark woods of Gascony. He has to die so that I can live. He will die tomorrow morning. He will die of the mass of South Sicilia. How can anyone die of a mass? Oh, the mass of Salsicea is the mass of revenge. The peasants of Gascony have known this for centuries. I must ask Father Giles. Oh, no, you will not breathe a word of this to Father Giles. But if he would perform the mass... He wouldn't dream of it. He probably doesn't even know it. Ah, but I know a priest who knows it and who will perform it. My daughter lives with him. We went to the deserted abbey where the priest lived. No one told me his name. I never asked. You are the one who orders this mass. Yes. For whom shall I say the mass? For Peter Sorel. 
Who will be my clerk? Oh, my daughter will be your clerk, father. Who will bring the water for the mass? I shall bring it, father. Do you know a place where the mass can be held? Ah, by the ruins of the church, where the gypsies live, father. I listened as though nothing they said had anything to do with me, Father Giles. I scarcely knew when they'd finished speaking. I only knew that after a while, Marini took me by the hand and led me away. Come, Louise, come. We must get the water for the mass. Shouldn't there be wine, Noemi? For the mass of saint Cesaire, there is no wine. There is only water. And the priest does not consecrate it. He drinks it. And it must be water from a well into which the body of an unbaptized infant has been thrown. Come now, Louise, come. Before 11 o'clock, we were at the ruined church. A dreadful place, Father, where bats lived and toads and owls. And through the darkness came the priest, Noemi's daughter by his side. And he stood by the ruins of the old altar. Never and never to reign and live you. Men also among you. Redemption the share in you. Noemi, what does he say? It is the mass of saint Cecile. But I don't understand it. It is the mass for the dead. He is reciting it backwards. I watched in horrid fascination, Father. I confess that I was fascinated by it. I was like a bird watching a snake. What is he doing now, Noemi? He is making a sign of the cross. No, he's not. He's not making... He is making the sign of the cross with his left foot. His foot in the dirt. This is the mass of saint Cesaire. I couldn't bear to look, Father Giles. I couldn't. And yet I couldn't bear not to look. was drawing to a close as the hour of midnight struck. And then the mass was suddenly over. And the priest and his clerk, Noemi's daughter, stole away into the darkness without a word to us. It is over, Louise, and Peter Sorel has begun to die. I'm not sure I believed her, Father Giles. I wasn't capable of belief or disbelief or of any thought at all or of any feeling whatsoever. I only felt tired, so tired I doubted I could move. But I pulled myself to my feet. And I said, I must go to him, Noemi. I must go to Peter Sorrell. And I went, Father. I went into town, to the house on the hill. And I waited there till the sun had been up for an hour. And then I went to the door and knocked. Oh, Louise. I suppose you want to see Peter. Is he here? Yes, he's here. But he's very ill. The doctor's with him. And no one knows what's the matter with him. But I knew, Father Giles, he was dying of the mass of saint Oh, Louise, Louise. I went to the door every hour, Father. Once, I was told that they'd sent for his doctor from the States. But if that doctor arrived, he came too late. For at 10 o'clock, when I knocked at the door. Louise. He's dead, Louise. He died a few minutes ago. No one knows why or how or what it was he died of. I see. I know you were very fond of him. I was very fond. Very fond. 
I went home. I took off my clothes, and I lay down on my bed. The little toad skin bag was still around my neck. I took it off. I kissed it. I put it under the pillow. And then I put my head on the pillow and went fast to sleep. I slept soundly with no dreams at all of any kind. And when I awoke, it was noon. Such a beautiful day. And I started to come here to make my confession. On the way, I met Peter Sorrell's friend once more. He died, Louise, of nothing at all. Nothing at all? He was perfectly well. Talking of going home in the morning. Then, about midnight, he said he was tired. He thought he'd go to bed. But he could hardly climb the stairs to his room. I had to help him. He lay on the bed and closed his eyes. He said he felt as though he was slipping away. Wasn't that a strange thing for him to say? That he was slipping away? I murmured something. Said it was strange indeed. Though, of course, I knew it wasn't. He died of the mass of San Cesare, Father. And now I've told you everything. And what do you expect me to do, Louise? Would he give me my penance, Father? I know it will be severe. I expect that. I want it to be severe. I know what a grave sin I have committed. Do you, Louise? To wish for a man's death, Father. To bring it about. What greater sin could there be? To wish for a man's death. It is a sin in thought, but it can be forgiven. And you are not the first to have committed it. Your wish did not kill him. Men do not die so easily. It was the mass of Saint Césaire that killed him. God knows, and he alone. But you conspired in the performance of a gruesome mass... A relic from the Dark Ages. You took part in it. And what is most awful, you ordered it. And for this desecration of a holy ritual, there is no penance that would suffice. But without a penance, how can I obtain absolution? How can I obtain pardon? I cannot pardon you, Louise. I do not know a curate who can, nor a... Nor a bishop, nor an archbishop. Father, what am I to do? My child, it is possible. I, I promise you nothing you understand. But it is possible. Were you to go to Rome, if the Pope were to see fit... To Rome? To the Holy Father? Only he has the right to grant pardon for the Mass of Saint Césaire. Sir, sir, can you tell me, sir, may I ask you? Yes, signora, can I help you? Please, is this the Vatican? This is Vatican City, yes. Is this the square of St. Peter? Uh, yes, uh, straight ahead is St. Peter's Gate. Oh, I am here. You've never been here before? Oh, I have come to see the Pope. Oh, His Holiness is quite busy, Signora. I come here to make my confession. L let me take you to a priest. No, it must be His Holiness. No one else. Are your sins so great? My sin is so great. Yes. Well, I, I'm only a student here, Signora, but I'll be glad to take you to a priest. No priest can help me. No bishop. No archbishop. But a priest might be able to arrange things so that you could see his holiness. And not right away, of course. It would take time. 
I have time. It has already taken me a long time just to come this far. How long has it taken you? A thousand days. A thousand? Where did you come from? France. A little town in Gascony. But that could take you almost three years? Oh, you must have stopped off in different places. Each night to sleep and pray. You mean you walked all the way? An old woman like you? Do I look like an old woman? I have just turned 40. Oh, forgive me, but you look much older than that. It doesn't really matter now. Uh, Come, come. Let me help you to your feet. No. I shall stay on my knees until I see the Pope. I shall end my journey as I began it. Are you telling me that you have come a thousand miles on your knees? But why? It is my penance for the Mass of Saint Césaire. A thousand miles, a thousand days on her knees. What awful retribution we expect of ourselves. What endurance we can find within us to carry out our goal. And what is the priceless goal we seek, the goal that so obstinately eludes us after thousands upon thousands of miles and as many days? Why, I think it is nothing more and nothing less than peace of mind. I'll be back shortly. I told you it would be a somber story, did I not? And so it was. Well, exploring the unknown is not all fun and frolic. But the unknown must be explored in the wild hope that one day it will become known. I wonder, though, when it is as familiar to us as, say, the combustion engine, will it stop being fascinating and become boring? What then will we do for fun? What will happen to this program? Merciful heavens, what will I do for a job? Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, Mildred Clinton, Bill Johnston, Robert Dryden, and Nick Pryor. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the Sinus Medicines, Buick Motor Division, and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. (laughs) 